Hello marine bio people. Today we're going to be talking about the phyla mollusca, the successful soft-bodied organisms. This is an exciting phyla because we have such diversity. We have things as simple as a clam and as complex as an octopus. Within this phyla, we're going to be talking about three different classes. We're going to be talking about gastropoda, which are the snails and slugs. We're going to be talking about bivalvia, which are the clams. And then we're going to be talking about the cephalopods, which are like the octopuses and squid. Come here for a second. Yes, you can say octopuses. You do not have to say octopi. Let's talk about some mollusk characteristics. They are bilateral soft-bodied organisms. They have a mantle, which in most species secretes a calcium carbonate shell. They have a tongue called a radula. Radula. The radula is a tongue covered in teeth. So when they lick things, they are scraping it with this tooth covered tongue. Having a radula, a tongue covered in teeth, is kind of like having a chainsaw for cutting vegetation. Most mollusks have an open circulatory system, meaning that there's no veins. You just have heart or hearts pumping blood all around the body, except for in the cephalopods, like the squids and the octopuses, they actually have veins, so they have a closed circulatory system. Oh, hello. It must be time for another Mr. Bird fun fact. So do octopuses have blue blood? Well, many worms, mollusks, and arthropods do have blue blood compared to chordates like humans that have red blood. The reason is mammals and humans and chordates, we have hemoglobin. Hemoglobin has iron, which transports oxygen in our blood. And when iron comes in contact with oxygen, it turns red. So hemoglobin is red. But in mollusks and arthropods and worms, they don't have hemoglobin. They have hemocyanin. Hemocyanin has copper instead of iron. And when copper comes in contact with oxygen, it turns kind of greenish blue. And so, yeah, octopuses do have blue blood. Let's talk about the three classes of mollusks that we will be discussing. The first one is gastropoda. So gastro means stomach and poda means foot. So the stomach foots. Gastropods are the mollusks that move around on their foot, on their stomach foot, like a snail. Picture how a snail moves around on the bottom of its body. We call that bottom a foot. They don't have a leg, but they have a muscular foot. So the gastropods would be snails, sea slugs, abalone, limpets. All of these guys are moving around on their bottom mass. We call it gastropoda, gastropods. When looking at a snail, this bottom part of the snail is considered its foot. When you look at a clam, the muscular mass inside the shells is called a foot. When you look at an octopus, its head is considered the foot. So this muscular mass on a snail and on mollusks is considered a foot. Most gastropods have a shell, except for the nudibranchs. Nudibranchs is the name for sea slugs. They're called nudibranchs, nudie meaning naked, and bronchs like bronchitis, bronchial tubes, has to do with their gills. So nudibranchs, naked gills. The nudibranchs have these beautiful elaborate gills outside of their body. They're hanging on the outside. Well, the nudibranchs no longer create a shell. So the nudibranchs, also called sea slugs, are part of gastropoda. They have the mantle, but they don't secrete a calcium carbonate shell. Our next class of mollusk is the bivalves. Bi meaning two, valve meaning hinge. So bivalves have two shells that open and close. So examples of the bivalves are clams. Clams, oysters, mussels, all of these guys are in the class bivalvia, bivalves. They also have a muscular foot. They use this muscular foot for digging into the sand and burying themselves 
or some of them, like muscles, will attach to a pier and they'll be sessile. They'll be stuck to something and then they'll filter the water. They'll be filter feeders. Oh, you're back? You want another Mr. Bird fun fact? Okay, octopuses have three hearts and nine brains. They have one central brain for their central nervous system, and then they have eight ganglions, which count as brains at the top or base of each tentacle. So each tentacle has its own brain that control the tentacle movements. Wow, three hearts, nine brains, that's fantastic. Our third class of mollusks is the cephalopods. Cephala meaning head and pod meaning foot, the head foots. They're called this because their muscular foot has become what kind of appears to be a head. And so the cephalopods are the nautilus, the squid, the cuttlefish, and the octopuses. They have tentacles that they use as arms or hands for picking things up and eating and moving around. They have all lost the ability to make a calcium carbonate shell besides the nautilus. That's the only cephalopod that makes a shell. We have very intelligent cephalopods like the cuttlefish and the octopus, which can problem solve. They can open jars. They can do all kinds of extraordinary things. The cephalopods also have chromatophores in their skin, allowing them to change color, texture, and blend in to numerous surroundings. There are many classes of mollusks besides the three that we just discussed. But the three that I talked about are the most common in marine biology. So again, gastropods, these are the snails. Bivalvia, these are the clams. And cephalopoda, these are gonna be the squids and octopuses. I hope you enjoyed talking about mollusca. I'll see you next time.